This is Laborts and it is so nice to have you here. These are the paints you need. Guys, today is going to be a little bit different video because the guys on Patreon voted for the Cerberus miniature from Massive Darkness. This is the only miniature that received an official uh, tutorial from Simon. Today I'm going to try to follow that tutorial and tell my thoughts about it. I remember when I first watched it uh, over the Massive Darkness 2 uh, Kickstarter campaign, I was like, yeah, I can see everything that uh, this guy does, but uh, I do not understand what he is doing. But uh, since that was a couple of years ago, now I have some clues uh, what he's doing. Or at least I hope I know what he's doing. Okay? So the tutorial we are following is made by Big Child Creatives and the painter who made it called Ruben Martinez. He's one of my favorite painters of all time, so check out his work. I put his IG link in the video description. Okay, so uh, Ruben tends to mix the colors uh, from the primary colors. It's uh, more about the feel of the color and, and, and not about the, the exact uh, ratios. So I would prefer to use some uh, pre-mixed uh, colors as you can see from all my uh, tutorials. It is very, very useful tool as a painter to basically mix up any color that you want, any color you dream of, okay? It's a very, very good exercise. The color that we see on our monitor and the colors that he sees, it's probably a little bit different. And, and I will have uh, some trouble with that. Uh, for disclosure, guys, I also have a Deutranomaly, which means I don't really see uh, greens that well. But it's no big deal because it's not like I try to make a living out of uh, painting miniatures, right? I uh, tend to look at this problem as I look at the world differently. So what I paint is uh, must have been look uh, a bit different or unique or something like that. All right. Okay, he used the uh, Zenitha priming. I don't really understand why, because he blocks in the two uh, main colors uh, on the body of the dog using quite thick layers of paint. And he is wet blending, as I can tell. Or I'm guessing he's wet blending because uh, he's working with the colors li really, really fast. And uh, this is where 20 years versus uh, three and a half years of experience uh, kick in. I'm not that good with wet blending, especially in the summer, because in the summer it gets uh, quite hot in uh, Hungary. And I don't have an AC, of course, because I'm a Hungarian and uh, Hungarians uh, tend to get sick from uh, ACs. We don't know why, we just uh, prefer to do that. Because these layers are so thick, I don't see what uh, value he's getting out of the Zenita priming, but maybe he did a photo after the Zenita priming so uh, he can see where the major highlights go. Maybe he he, he just do it uh, from the top of his head because uh, Ruben Martinez is, is, is really a, a top-notch uh, painter. Uh, he's really one of the greatest. Uh, if this video reaches uh, Ruben Martinez by any, any way, then uh, hi, hi dad. Or he just uh, prefers this kind of method. One, one uh, thing I can think about is he's using Zenita priming because this uh, Cerberus miniature got these little flaming scars and maybe the, the bright color that uh, he will use for the scars, it's easier to paint those. But uh, then again, why wouldn't you just paint it with some light gray? I don't know, but he probably know his, his stuff. So I'm not questioning anything here. I'm just uh, thinking loud. Okay. Okay. If you watch my videos, I always tell you to use a highlight reference picture if you're painting anything, but uh, this uh, dog demon has these flaming scars all over his body. So those are little light sources. And uh, it's also, it, it's a, it's a four legged creature which is quite interesting uh, if you paint something like this instead of a uh, human or something humanoid looking, okay? Because for this type of creatures, making just the light come from one direction, like from the left, it's, uh, it's not really working throughout the whole body. So you need to create the highlights like all over the body basically, and you can leave a darker part uh, throughout the back. But uh, yeah, it's quite interesting to see how he divides the shadow zones between those cars. It's quite tricky actually to do that. And, and to do it this well. <laughs> First, we start with Rhinoxide and Bane Blade Brown and the mix of the two. As you see, I tried to wet blend, but my paint was a bit too thin. See guys, Papa Laborts uh, got used to thin layers, so he's challenging himself with uh, these uh, thicker ones and uh, fails. But uh, that's all right. I went in with some thin layers later and blend the colors together. 
I'm not using any highlight reference since I try to follow the highlight scene on the video. To make it easy, basically everything that faces down I paint those parts with Rhinoxide and everything that faces up I paint them with uh, Baneblade Brown. Okay, this part where he paints the flaming scars with yellow. The edge of the scars are really uh, not that nice. So take your time with this part. It's going to take a while. This uh, footage is speed up incredibly. Maybe this whole uh, paint job took him like, uh, I don't know, four hours or something like that. It took like eight for me. So yeah and uh, <laughs> and as you can see the results are going to be a little bit different this took some while guys but uh, i also tried to to mention that a couple of times painting something that looks really really good it took a while like imagine if if a professional painter does that and i don't know how much time does it take for him but let me say like four to six hours and if your skills are not on pair with him then like yeah you're probably gonna need more time and if uh, and if you paint something like this for in uh, 16 hours or in 20 hours or in 30 it doesn't matter if you manage to paint something like this then you're going to improve your skills so much faster i use a mix of ice yellow and white to paint the flaming scars really take your time with this part and if you make any mistakes then just go back with the previous colors it's a really time consuming process, so be patient or I will slap on your tiny hand. I really love that part and uh, this was so valuable for me. These dog heads are actually bone or skulls and he's using white to layer in um, this uh, bone color. I'm, I'm not sure if he's using actually white because on the brush it looks a little bit uh, dark. So I'm guessing it's either a, a very, very pale bone color or, or it's something like an off-white, like ivory. The main thing here is uh, he used the bright brown, uh, like he, he used the, on the rest of the body, and he used that all over the, the upper part of the, on the face. So if you leave the recesses uh, darker, it's going to create a perfect recess shadow uh, for this white color. And this is very, very fast. Like these heads are very detailed, very, very cool using only one one color to to make it pop and and uh, be ready with it like this this is definitely what i need to to work on not to use uh, three uh, different colors every time these uh, black lines that he is going to leave which are not black uh, by black lining I'm talking about the technique uh, not the color. It's going to look super, super crispy. It's really, really easy. And uh, you can always go back with a uh, darker brown if you prefer that. But if you make a lot of mistakes, I will slap on your tiny hand, all right? Just going straight off white uh, with the school color is, uh, I don't know, probably is just so interesting to me because I wouldn't uh, do it uh, this way. But this is very valuable for me at least. So we layer in the ivory on the school. Now we use thin layers and build up the opacity on the parts that are facing up. It's very important to leave the recesses brown so the school will be more defined and cool looking. We do this three times, there is no light source that uh, we should care about. Just make sure your layers are opaque as possible on the parts that faces up. If you need to, just go back with the bamboo brown to make the recesses crispy like the skin on granny's feet. Alright, we are at the airbrushing part. Now I had some uh, trouble with that to follow along because he is mixing up this uh, orangish red. So I don't know if I was close or not with the with the colors. Short disclaimer: my airbrushing skills are not on pair uh, with uh, with Rubens. Okay, it's a it's a little bit uh, off. Only only move the air, airbrush trigger like just a little bit just super tiny bit <laughs> and by the way he has a really really nice and decent uh, airbrush not like this uh, green stuff ones that uh, that i have but i'm going to buy <laughs> something better uh, very very soon because uh, yeah uh, these are not very good but can do the job all right <laughs> also mine has a bent needle so i didn't make it easy for myself the consistency that he's using it's it's actually not not very thin it's quite thick it's a base layer consistency for the airbrush uh, or so i can tell but his trigger control is like 
super precise. Like, I bet I'm betting he's only moving the the trigger like half a millimeter maximum when he is doing that. For the airbrush, my uh, compressor is between three three and a half uh, psa, and the paint dilution ratio is uh, one part paint, one part thinner. I try to make some orangish red uh, using Evil Sun Scarlet and Demonic Yellow. Evil Suns is one of my favorite red because it's super rich and uh, saturated. After that I compared the results to the tutorial and I realized that my reds are darker than the ones he's using, so I add a bit more yellow to the mix. This felt more accurate, so I tried to spray this color over the flaming parts and build up the opacity over those parts. As I mentioned before, be very gentle with your airbrush sticker, you guys. Like when you're touching Granny's face, okay? Don't pull back all the way and create webbing or any other problems because I will slap on your tiny hand. With the airbrush it is quite easy to make these nice gradients over the tongues and ears and really keeps the focal point on the head. Later I realized I didn't paint on the inside of the mouth so I fixed that with the previous mixture. This unfortunately killed the gradient on the tongue so make sure you guys paint it before the airbrush step. Now let's add more yellow to the airbrush and uh, I sprayed this orange closer to the flaming parts. So yeah guys, as I said, my airbrush skills are not on pair with uh, Ruben Martinez's, so I definitely need to practice more with that, but I really enjoyed the process and uh, had fun painting this three-headed uh, demon dog. Okay, this part where he, he uses the uh, magenta to, to darken down the, the red parts, this is where I got a little bit lost uh, with, my, with my highlights because uh, I do, didn't really see where to put it. He obviously knew, knew where to where to put these highlights, but but I don't really get it to... Like, between the uh, chest and the shoulder, there is a darker part, because all the flames are pointing in different directions, right? But on the neck, he, he, will, he will create a really dark shadow, which will go look good on the photo that he makes in the end. But... But it doesn't make much sense, but I guess if it looks good, it doesn't matter if it makes much sense. There are also flamey scars here, but those are smaller scars, so maybe the, the light coming from those are not as uh, bright or intense or something like that. I don't know. I mixed some Evil Sun Scarlet and Vine Red to achieve something similar, and as I mentioned, I lost a little bit uh, track here uh, with the shadows. I always build up the colors from the darkest to the brightest and creating these shadows felt a bit off-putting for me, but I tried to do it anyway. I tried to focus on the parts that faces down and uh, closer to the flaming scars, but it felt like I lost some uh, tonal contrast on the way and as the old saying goes, if something feels a bit off, it uh, probably is, so I slept on my tiny hand. So he's using these really really thin layers of purple to uh, bring out those uh, dark shadows. A quite basic thing to do that you don't use blacks for shadows, okay? You use blacks for, for black lining. You can use black for shadows if you prefer to, but always try to, to add uh, a nice tone to it. Like, he's using purple probably because there are lots of uh, yellows on this miniature, so it's a nice complementary shadow for those. But any dark color could go, uh, could work uh, for the shadows, as long as it's cold and dark. Like dark cold greens, dark cold uh, blues, uh, even even uh, some reds could work. But uh, in this case it uh, wasn't, wouldn't be as uh, vibrant. So for all these darkest shadows I used Nagarot Knight. It's felt a bit too saturated, so I would mix it with Rhinoxide uh, in a 1 to 1 uh, ratio, if I was about to paint this again. I focus this color behind the back uh, of the heads and the butt, behind the legs and on the sides. So to fix the purpleness, I glaze some Rhinoxide over the areas, starting the brass strokes in the reddish part and stopping over the purple parts. Make sure your paint is not too runny, but thin enough so it won't be obvious which part was made with a brush and which was uh, done by an airbrush. Okay, so this part where he uses this really really uh, bright uh, ice yellow like uh, yellow, it's quite interesting uh, over the airbrush surface. Always use thin layers over airbrush surfaces, otherwise it's going to be super uh, obvious where you made a brass stroke. And he even uh, takes a note on that, that uh, don't make any evident brass strokes. Thin your paints guys and it's uh, going to look uh, just as awesome. 
and it's uh, quite uh, interesting that he also paints the, the little scars on the body as well but he's he's trying to make a transition uh, even there so try to do that but to achieve that result use thin layers of paint okay following the last step i added some more white to the mix and focused on the center of the fiery core be very careful around those small red parts and make sure to use thin layers of paint or your brush strokes will show through and i will slap on your tiny hand and with that cerberus is done and ready for the table so thank you for joining me on this little painting adventure please don't be shy and leave a comment under the video and give it a like maybe and a huge thanks to my patreons who support this kind of videos with special shout out to Jonathan Rhodes, Cold Bloody Dom, Trying to Paint Minis, Jonathan Mosner, Ruizak, Vlad D, Urtepel21, One Sharp Joe Crafts, Glitchy Macrash, and Guillaume Belanger. If you want to support the work of Papa Labors, you can do that on Patreon, where you will have early access to these videos and you can vote on the next mini. Or if you need a little bit of extra help, online coaching is also available. I hope the rest of your day will be as smooth as a granny's butt cheek.